uh, to 81089 or email talksport.net. Uh, let's go to Leon in West London. Hello, mate. Welcome. Hey, mate. How's it going? Yeah, good. You're on TalkSport, Leon. Welcome, mate. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Um, I, I don't know that I weighed in on the, on the whole Frankie Boyle issue. I've, yeah. been to see, I've been to see Frankie twice yeah. in the past three years. And basically, I think, I think the guy's tremendously funny. And at the end of the day, about the Down syndrome thing, he doesn't only limit it to Down syndrome. He, take, he takes the mickey out of everyone. I don't, I don't know if you've been to actually watch him or you've just heard him a couple times. No, no, I'll tell you, my, my, knowledge, my knowledge of Frankie Boyle is limited to seeing him occasionally on the telly, uh, but also uh, watching a few clips on YouTube, which I thought were very funny. I've got to say. Yeah. Yeah, see, see with me, see with me, I watched the first the first seven seasons of Mock the Week. Yeah. Frankie's left the show, and the show's never been the same for it, in my mm. view. Mm. But the fact of but the fact of the matter is, when you try and stifle comedians, then it just creates a slippery slope at the end of the day because we're talking about free speech. And as you've already said, you can't have free speech for one and free speech for the other. Mm. And at, and at the end of the day, with the whole with the whole Down syndrome thing. Hey, I, I, heckle, I heckled him when he was in Hammersmith about, about a year and a half, two years ago almost. I heckled him saying, oh yeah, would you, would you get a blowjob off someone with Down syndrome? Mm. And, he, and the joke, the reply that he came out with was, yes, because the saliva would make a very good lubricant. Mm, yeah, <laughs> a classy geezer, I can tell. But no, I mean, you know, and fair dues to you, Leon, for that, you know, and and fair dues for him for coming back. I suppose, uh, I suppose, it, you know, for me, Leon, I, you know, I, I'll, I'll just be straight about it. I, you know, I grew up in an era when alternative comedy broke through, and it was, uh, you know, it, of course, a lot of these geezers now, you know, your, your Ben Elton's and your your Alexi Sales, uh, a little bit stale, a little bit. Old hat, if you like, but at the time, but ben, ben Elton still, Ben Elton is still a quality writer. Yeah, that's, but that's uh, but at the time, you know, th there, there, there was a school of comedy which said, you know, it was all right to make fun of of people if they were not white. It was all right to make fun of this group or that group, and they just bust through all that. And it suddenly said, actually, you know, think about your comedy, think why you're doing it, and and who you're enemy is, I suppose, and, and who the, the point of the joke is. And it seems to me we've gone full circle. When, if people like Frankie Boyle, who are kind of now operating in the space that those guys created, you know, they, you know comedy was reborn in that era in the, in the I guess, the, the mid-80s. It, it was suddenly became fashionable and it started hitting clubs and, you know, a whole new generation of, of people went to start watching comedy and and yet yeah. what, what are they going to see now uh, the people who are the spiritual inheritors of bernard manning and chubby roy chubby brown well well well, well, at the, well at the end of the day i mean comedy comedy is a lot like music it's very very subjective and at the end of the day frankie boyle i love him he's one of my favorite comedians mm. but then you say that we've come full circle i personally don't think we have i mean in terms of in terms of pushing boundaries i think I think comedy still has a bit of a way to go because if you listen to American comedians like, say, Paul Mooney, for instance, who bases a lot of his comedy on race, is is the case of a lot of people are like, oh my god, oh my god, you can't say that, you can't say yeah, that. Yeah. But there shouldn't there shouldn't be things that you can and can't that you can and can't say, whether it's whether it's whether it's race, whether it's about disabled people. It's one of them ones. Every, uh, everyone Leon, can't Leon, get, in, the and everyone, in theory, and everyone should be able to have the Mickey taken out. Yeah, yeah. Now, Leon, listen. In theory, I agree with you, but uh, and I think. Uh, you look at the sort of stuff that sometimes Ricky Gervais does it really well in extras, where it, he'll make you wince at a joke because there might be a reference, let's say, to disability. But he'll do it, but the person uh, uh, who's kind of making the joke is also the butt of the humour as well. Mm. And uh, with Frankie Ball, I don't think there's, there's no levels there. He's just taking... He's taking... <laughs> the P out of people who can't answer back. And I just think, yeah, you know, I'm not saying he should be banned. I'm not saying he, even people shouldn't go and see him. I'm just asking, what's funny about that? Isn't that... Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but it, is, it is funny because, because you look at it as well with Frankie. He does take the mickey out of himself. I mm. mean, it, again, again, going, going back to his, his stand-up routine, he's, a, he's, he's talk, he talks about... Um, he talks about um, when he grows when he grows a beard, and because he wears glasses as well, he goes, "Yeah, people people start shouting pedophile at me." Mm. 
Mm. <laughs> and mm. he goes, "Oh, what is it about beers and glasses that kids find so sexy?" Yeah, <laughs> he's he's not he's not just talking. He doesn't just talk about the disabled. He takes shots at everyone. Look at his joke about David Coulthard. I mean, he he says about David Coulthard and his big jaw thing, and he says when he goes down on his wife, it must be it must feel like she's getting rescued by a dolphin. <laughs> I mean, he 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 takes the Mickey. He literally <laughs> takes the Mickey out of everyone he can. Yeah. And at the end of the day, there's no point stifling comedy. All right, yeah, some say Bernard Manning used to be a racist, but hell, if if people laugh, it that's the that's the whole point of comedy. Whether you're taking a mic out of someone who's disabled, of someone handicapped, what whatever, everyone everyone in comedy is a target, and you shouldn't try and limit any any comedian in any sort of way. I mean, con- I mean, it's I mean, look at look at it this way: controversy creates cash. Look at look at guys like Russell Brand, who are, Russell Brand is, in my view, is not funny at all. He's nothing but ah, bum tech really never ah. He's not. He's nothing but he's nothing but cheap shock tactics, yeah. and he's not funny. Yeah. It's 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 yeah. I mean, I just think his jokes are pretty cheap. But Frankie, if you're watching him mock the week on a regular basis, the guy is sharp. The guy, the guy is really he's the sharpest knife in the drawer on that program. That's why I feel that. Since he's left the program, the program's gone downhill. Leon, thanks very much indeed for your call. Nothing is sacred, says Leon, in comedy. Everything is fair game for humour. At one level, I agree. Uh, I still don't see what can be funny about kids with Down syndrome. Sorry, maybe I'm just missing something.